Hey, how's it going everybody? Roman Lacroix here and today we're going to continue our discussion on equity options extending what we were working with last time to the binomial pricing model. So let's just go ahead and get started here. If we take a look at the binomial pricing model proposed by Cox, Rubin, Stan and Ross in its simplest form, then we can just represent one step in time. So let, let's kind of break this down a little bit to to really get a good understanding of what's going on. So we have some stock price at this current point in time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna model this movement of a stock price as either moving up or down by some step delta t. So try not to get too hung up on the notation. We're gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. We're simply saying that one step in time, the stock price is either gonna increase or the stock price is gonna decrease. And then we're also going to assume that there's gonna exist a call option where we can derive the value uh, at this terminal step. So pretty much what I'm saying is we're gonna pick a strike price and we're gonna be able to evaluate this call option at expiration, uh, where the expiration is going to be predefined by this delta T here. This will probably make a lot more sense once we tie values to each of these quantities, so let's just do exactly that. Our stock price today, so at this current point in time, is going to be 100. And after one step, so we'll just say that this is one year, delta T, we have two states of the world, very similar to the previous example we worked with in the other episode, where we have this up state where the stock price increases to 105. And we have this down state where the stock price decreases to 95. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, you can see that we have this call option defined where we have some strike price uh, and we have some terminal spot price and we can derive the value of that call option at expiration. So you can see we do exactly that right here on this uptick. The difference between 105 and 100 is five. The maximum between five and zero is five. And then the difference between 90 and 100 is negative 10 the maximum between negative 10 and zero is just gonna be zero, and we're gonna keep it simple, excluding the multiplier for now. But this is just to give you a good idea of you know, what all of these quantities should look like with numbers tied to them. So now that we actually tied numbers to everything, let's talk about why we want to model the environment exactly like this. Why is this helpful in terms of pricing? Well, let's take a look at this environment. We have two different securities. We have the underlying equity, which has value tied to it. And now we also have this, this derivative that also has value tied to it. So we can actually construct a portfolio based on these two different securities. And what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to go long the underlying equity, and we are going to be the writer or short the call option. So in either state of the world, we can construct the value of this portfolio. If we take a look here, you can see if the stock price increases, then we are going to have 105 multiplied by delta, where delta represents the number of shares in the underlying equity that we own, less five, which is essentially the exercising of the option. And since we're the writer, we lose that similar notion. If the stock price decreases, then we are going to have 90 times the number of shares that we own less zero since, again, you know, representing the exercising uh, as we are the writer of that option. We have two portfolios in either state of the world, but this represents a system where there is one unknown and two equations. So we can actually solve for this delta value. And the reason we wanna solve for this delta value is because if we can match the portfolio value in either state of the world, whether the stock price increases or decreases, then we are essentially risk neutral, meaning whether the stock price increases or the stock price decreases, we are certain of what the value of this portfolio is going to be one step into the future by this delta T we can go ahead and do exactly that. As you can see here, we're going to set 105 times delta less five equivalent to 90 times delta less zero. And if you solve for delta, you're going to get one third. 
And in either case, if you set delta equivalent to one third, then you are going to get 30 for the portfolio value. So this is actually pretty cool, right? If the stock price were to increase or decrease, we would know that our portfolio value would be 30 in either state of the world. If this is the case and we know what the risk-free rate is based on everything we've discussed up until this point about the time value of money and the previous example from the last episode with the fair value, then we can simply discount this 30 portfolio value back to today, since we know delta T is equivalent to one, and we can figure out what the value of this portfolio is today. Fortunately, we know what delta is and we know what the stock price is today, so the excess is essentially the value of the option. That's what we're going to be finding. So if you take a look here, 100 times delta less the value of the call is equivalent to 30 discounted at the risk-free rate. So it's going to be equal to 28.57. Now we know what delta is. So if we plug in delta, we get the equity portion of our portfolio is $33.33. It's gonna be repeating, but bear with me for the rounding, uh, less the value of the call option. So we can simply solve for that value by subtracting 28.57 and adding the, the call to the other side, and we see that the call is worth $4.76. There are a lot of concepts built into this video, and there's going to be a lot of different directions we can go in. But what I want to highlight is three main things. One is the title of the slides, which has been no arbitrage option pricing throughout this entire video. So let's start there. No arbitrage option pricing is a very strong statement. What we're essentially saying is the value that we derived for this call option today implies that there's no way to construct a risk-free profit in either state of the world based on some combination of the derivative and the underlying equity. And that's going to be a very important statement going forward, especially into more advanced pricing models like Black-Scholes. So number one is no arbitrage. Number two is this notion of delta. Delta is going to be a very large topic of conversation going forward, especially when we start to derive the Greeks from the Black-Scholes model. But for now, the entire reason that no arbitrage pricing was even possible was because we were able to hold delta shares in this portfolio, setting the portfolio equal to each other in either state of the world, developing this, this risk neutral portfolio to find the no arbitrage price. And delta in this case, we didn't come up with any sort of generalized equation for it. So that's actually going to be the next step before moving on to the full scale binomial pricing model. So the second thing to take away is this notion of delta, which develops uh, risk neutrality in our portfolio. The third and last thing that I hope you take away from this video is to understand that this is a very simple one step state of the world. And in reality, we can construct uh, a very large number of steps to generate more accurate prices. This is very similar to if you have any experience with Monte Carlo pricing, you can generate more paths to generate more accurate prices, uh, so on and so forth. But this will become uh, even more clear when we, when we start to generate the uh, equation, the generalized equation for delta. And then we will be moving on to more advanced, uh, larger binomial trees uh, with more steps. And, and that'll generate, as I said, more accurate prices. But uh, first, we're going to be deriving this this generalized delta, and that will be in the next episode. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching.